Hello guys, it's uh, January the 28th, uh, Thursday. I um, have just uh, removed the the plastic tarps we had on our garden. My name is Gary, by the way. Uh, this is our, our Back to Eden uh, homestead, urban homestead here in Southern Nevada. So I'm gonna take a walk. You're gonna hear some noise because I'm brushing up against the plastic. I apologize from the start. but. Anyway, these herbs here that my wife have planted, and I think it's, it's oregano. It's good. But anyway, we lost our, our basil. We had different type of basils here. They went to sea, but the first frost we had here in Nevada destroyed them all, so we just replant the whole box. We have a lot of exciting things that we're gonna be doing in this garden this year um, so stay tuned for that I'm trying to get a, my own web page up and our web page and mine owned also so that um, I like the soil that's what I do soil worms my wife and I are, are raising worms also and uh, we're gonna be raising uh, mushrooms and other things uh, for the garden this is the herb box that my wife planted one of many uh, she's a master herbalist she has her own page with my daughter, so uh, stay tuned for that. It's already out. Um, so the Epicurean and the Herbalist, I think that's what the page is called. And right now this is um, collards. We're expecting a heavy rain tonight. So I took all the plastic off because I want the soil to be drenched with the minerals from the rain because it helps the, these raised garden beds to do better. They function better. You know, I watered them with a filter on the hose so that um, last year, before I got the filter, kept wondering why all of our garden greens were turning yellow. You know, it's because all the sodium and chemicals in the water, municipal water. So by putting that filter on the water line, it solved the problem. I will discuss, I'm pointing over there, that's our aquatic rain catchment system that we put fish in. And you see those pipes running over there. What happened is, the DNA from the tanks is leached into these beds. It's all organic. So I just thought I'd let you know that. So I'm just taking you on a quick tour. And temperature, I think, is in the low 50s. Or not 50s, but the 40s. And you see different type of um, Swiss chard over here. And lettuce. We have yellow Swiss chard, white Swiss chard, purple Swiss chard. So you can see... They're still very healthy. We've been feeding off of them. You can see where we've been cutting stocks to use them for juicing every day and for our salads and our soups. So this is our store. And you have dandelions over there, very good for you. Um, my wife knows every plant out here. I took horticulture in college and that was my minor. My major was uh, biology because I wanted to be a and neuroscientists. In the third year of med school, I got called back to active duty. But I was discharged in 2003, so I'm glad. Anyway, this is um, filled um, mustard, I believe. A mustard, very spicy, very good for you. Um, our tomatoes we lost. We started them late. Last spring, we had tomatoes, and all the leaf-legged beetles tore them up. Our cabbage our squash, I mean, they devoured everything. So this year we're gonna employ non-poisonous spiders, prey mantis, lacewing bugs, ladybugs, and even little gecko crickets. Keep the competition healthy. So anyway, this is what we started last spring and we still have food. You know, we come out here, we eat out of our garden raw. And some people say, well, I don't believe that. Well, I'm due to have a snack right now anyway. Mm, mm, mm. Good for you. Minerals right from the ground. Excuse me. Minerals right from the ground, from the soil, with all the vitamins that's in the soil, the power that's in the soil is now in the vegetables. And when we eat them straight, they go straight to your, your body to, to, to build up your cells in your body, make them healthy. This is collard greens right here. You see, they're nice and healthy. Mm. It's milkweed. 
this little butterf butterflies, hopefully monarch. So we keep them in there. Uh, this time we're gonna be putting wild field lilies in the boxes. And we don't, we get bees out here, contrary to belief. This is dinosaur kale. Big old collard greens. Now I shoot raw because I'm still working on trying to edit my stuff professionally. Maybe I'm a farmer and I don't have it done. But I just wanted to show you that you can grow your own food and not starve. And you get good quality vegetables. And you don't have to worry about where it was shipped from, how long it was in the container, how long did they irradiate it before you got it thinking that you had some good leafy greens. And these field mustards are hot. I wanted to show I do eat these. I don't need no salad dressing. I didn't say I don't eat salad with dressing on, but out in the yard, I take it as is. So as you can see, everything's very healthy. Got a little bit yellow down there. Some frost. But overall, mm, 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 it's so spicy. Make your nose run. Mm. My goodness. This is better than ice cream. I just want you to see. Mm, mm, mm. Now you see, we got grow towers. And what, stuff grew because we started late, but we want to see how we would do. There's worms in the center of these towers. So to enrich the soil. The worm bin that, that we're raising is inside the garage because it's too cold out here. Not that the worm's scared because they're underground. They don't, can't fill it anyway, I don't think. These okra stalks gave us plenty of okra. So I'm doing an experiment to see that in spring if they'll rebud. So I'm not cutting these out yet. These are kale, I believe. Not you guys out there can correct me if you know what they are. Sound off. Beautiful purple kale plant. Majestic. So this is how we roll here in Southern Nevada, Las Vegas. And as you can see, we have tarps, the shade tarps, because the temperatures get up to 115 degrees. If you don't cover your vegetables or your garden, you won't have one. I can promise you that. And after 14 years of experience, my wife and I, we know what works here in the desert and what doesn't work. All the beds got worms in them. Put last spring. And when we replant, there's abundant worms in there. And we're going to add even more. Dandelion. So you can't eat dandelion. It's a weed. Look up what dandelion does for you. Mm, mm, mm. So... This is a tour. We have six grow towers. So we're looking for a lot of success. I, forgot what that, I think that's borscht right here. I believe that is borscht. You can use your plant identifier to correct me if you need to. These are mustards. This is spinach down here. I'm gonna plant more of those. And we have carrots over there. I don't mean to talk my mouth full of goodness, but I am. So this is two of our garden. I'm gonna leave these up, maybe in summer. And the reason why I'm leaving these up, I'm gonna say, why are you leaving all these up here? Because when we order our insects, ladybugs like to fly off immediately. Unless they see something they want to eat. So what we're going to do is trap these insects inside these tents temporarily till they lay eggs so they'll be here. Prey mantis, lace wing bugs, ladybugs, non-poisonous spiders. Because here in the desert, we get different type of predators in our garden. And I like to uh, be able to keep that or mitigate some of the damage they do. I love tomatoes. I didn't get as many tomatoes as I did the year before. Hardly got any. But I plate full. The beetles ravaged them, took them out. 
<clears throat> so here we are. This is our own grocery store. We don't have to go to the store and get greens. We have plenty. And we've been eating off of them since last spring. Didn't think they would survive through the summer. What happened, they slowed down because they were too hot. But as soon as the weather started cooling off, everything started jumping up out of the ground. The soil had different organic structures in it, from phosphorus, from Epsom salt, to blood meal, um, to bone meal, and oyster shells for calcium to strengthen the leaves. Now, some of the things I just named are not readily available. They take months to break down. So I'm constantly looking on YouTube to find out what organic um, components we can use in these boxes that will be readily available. While the other organics are working themselves, in not just improving the soil structure, but for the, um, the veggies too. So this is um, the tour, just wanted you to see it. Right now, our temperature, I think yesterday was like 34, 35 degrees. And I covered the boxes up two days ago because I didn't want to lose anything like we did our basil. So, but we're expecting a lot of rain. At least they say 50% chance of rain. It was 70%, but I'll take what I can get. Uh, we went without rain last year for 240 some days so this is a welcome site to have recent rain hit our garden beds so one thing about this iphone 12 pro max i don't like it no people in my family want me to get the iphone i got it but with samsung phones you can video and pause the video to make it look clean and then hit pause again to start filming again you can't do that with apple phone phones none of them with all the money that they tell that these phones are worth and don't get me wrong they're good phones but they don't have the optics as as samsung phones do apple's optic focal length is poor you can't get too close without it blurring so in video mode is one thing but actually taking pictures the focal length is too short. These are the other boxes we have on the hill that we'll be redoing, planting. I just want you to see them. This is the dead part of the month. So nothing's jumping out like it is in our raised garden beds because they had them covered. They, they got more attention. This is a pistachio tree. It grew nice leaves, but no fruit. That's the female pistachio tree. And this, it's the male. Got to do some research and find out what I need to do. And down here, I passed this plant. I just showed it to you. It's called a Nepali. You can eat these. They usually, unfortunately, find these only in Latino stores. But this is an edible plant. Over here, have more Swiss chards. These beds don't do too well in the summer because the way the sun has, uh, they hit this corner of the house and everything in here is get burned up. So. We're thinking about maybe putting more cactus plants in this area. I'm gonna get some chickens. Gotta have some chickens. Yes, we're under HOA, but they can't control what you have in your backyard. Only in front. This is our fish tanks. I shut them down because we don't have any fish in them and they gotta be cleaned. And this is our water catchment series over here. It fills the fish tanks and they're low also. Everything has to be reclaimed this spring I have to leak all this water out. It's about 900 gallons for all the tanks total. You know, people ask about mosquitoes. We have, we took off the nets uh, when it became winter. So we do have nets on there because of ordinances about having standing water. But this water is always moving because they have a pump that I cover because it's raining. And it's a pool pump, very powerful pump, but it works. It pushes all that DNA of the fish through these lines, 
Do these spaghetti lines into the boxes. And these are the other herb boxes that my wife, she put in all these herbs in here. Just wanted you to see it. I've enjoyed a lot of gardening tips from other gardeners. Three seasons that we've been here. We bought this house in 2017. This up here because I was demonstrating a plate of food up here. Hope I didn't hurt it. These are apatinas. That's what these are called. Spearmint plant. This is not a tomato, but I think this is spearmint. Oh, yes. Mm. Mm hmm. So, and our passion fruit, um, they never only bloom twice. So they were nice and plush and green until it got cold. So I didn't cover them up, but they will rebound back. We had strawberries down here. You can see the a couple of strawberries. So they should have grown more, but I guess they're doing root work under the, all this box that we put around the African sumac tree, which is a very hardy tree. I know people say, well, you shouldn't have that around the tree because it's going to damage the trunk. No, it won't. Uh, so no damage in here at all. So just to answer that question, because I know someone's going to ask it. Why don't you put that box around the tree? It's going to rot the tree, trunk of the tree. Some trees you cannot put soil, they say. But you have to look at what Yahweh Elohim does in the forest. There's plants growing around the base and trunks of trees. And the trees are several hundred years old, if not over a thousand. This is our other garden bed that had a lot of herbs in it. You can see the sticks, that wormwood, and see that valerian. So I took all the sunflowers out because they died. This is a, um, let me get these wrong. I think this is an apple tree. And this is a, a lime, I think. Yeah, oh, this is a lemon tree. It's a lemon tree. So I've pruned all of our 19 fruit, different fruit trees that I have in the, in the yard already. So I'm excited. I already put organic fertilizer down. This is a lime, as you can see, sticker. And these are grape vines. I hope they come back. At first, when I got them from Star Nursery here in Vegas, I didn't think they were even going to bloom, but they did bloom. They even started growing grapes, and then they stopped. I know that was due to a, a mineral problem, probably lack of phosphorus or magnesium or calcium. These are also um, herbs. This is a pruned black fig. I'm sorry, black fig tree. And our grapefruit tree. We have one grapefruit on this tree. Let it stay on too long. And it wasn't any good. So you learn things in the garden about timing of how Yahweh has put his, his spirit in these plants and all creation testifies to his glory. And uh, sometimes we ignore it and we learn lessons. And this is, of course, a semi dwarf tree. I pruned it. It was real tall. As you can see, I've been cutting branches off here. Because too much power goes into the growth of the whole tree and they don't bring any fruit. So I have to get my plant identifier when the leaves come back. I think this is a either pear or is this cherry. And this is a black mulberry Persian. It fruits every year and it gives an abundance of, of black mulberries. They're delicious. This is an apple tree. It's an old kind. I'll be getting back to you when it blooms in the spring. Of course, we have... Uh, also, a garden bed over here where we have different uh, plants over there. And uh, the rest of these trees, you see me walking the property line. 
This is an apple tree. I just don't know what kind. I have to wait for the leaves to come on. Most of these trees that you see that don't have labels on it is my fault because when I planted them, I took off, I didn't take the label off the pot to put it around the tree. And this is where I grafted a, the branch back in. It took. And this is definitely a cherry tree. Black cherry, I think, Russian cherry. This is a pear tree some other type of pear. So I'll be updating you in the spring and any errors I made, I'll admit to them too. This is Red Delicious. You see how we took the logs that we had another, we had five African sumacs, we chopped it down. So my wife wanted something eclectic. So I threw these logs down here, put some soil down here and, and here you go. And this is definitely a cherry tree. So that's the tour. Thank you guys for uh, looking, if you looked at it. Uh, any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I haven't got my YouTube page up yet, and our YouTube page. I'm having one by myself, my wife is, and we're having one together. So, when we moved here, was nothing here but rocks. Nowhere in this, where you see all this green, or at least not green as it was, as in the spring, was rocks. So we terraformed this whole area, and this is where we are now. You guys take care of yourself. Enjoy yourself. Be safe out there. Please wear your mask. Love one another. Protect one another. And drop all that hate and indifference. Because our creator is full of love. But yet he's also full of judgment. This is probably why we have COVID. Take care, guys.